It's time for more tales of morbid psychopaths from around the world. Gorish stories of people with desires normal people never have. That's right, it's time for morbid story time. I'm your new host, Myrna. Enjoy this little tale. Dara Toddley was a convicted serial killer named the South Baton Rouge serial killer. He was suspected in the killings of many, many women. He was sentenced to death and was being held at the Louisiana State Penitentiary at Angola. He was pronounced dead by officials on January the 21st, 2016 at 10 or 9 a.m. It was a big news story in the Baton Rouge and surrounding community. Good afternoon to your friends, Greg Merriweather here. We're interrupting your program with what will be a sigh of relief for many families here in South Louisiana. Serial killer Derek Todd has died. Lee grew up like many children in small towns around South Louisiana. His father left soon after his birth. His neighbors and friends were mostly from his extended family. His interest in school was limited to playing in the school band. Academically, however, Lee struggled, often being outshined by his younger sister who was a year younger than him, but advanced in school faster. His IQ ranging from below 70 to 75, made it challenging for him to maintain his grades. By the time Lee turned 11 he had been caught peeping into the windows of girls in its neighborhood, something he continued to do as an adult. At the age of 13 Lee was arrested for simple burglary and vandalizing a candy store. He was already known to the local police because of his wireism, but it wasn't until he was 16 that his anger issues got him in real trouble. He pulled a knife on a boy during a fight, charged with attempted second-degree murder, and he admitted to setting his own car on fire for the insurance money. Lee's rap sheet was slow in beginning to fill up. At age 17 Lee was arrested for being a peeping Tom, but even though he was a high school dropout with multiple complaints and arrests, he managed to stay out of going to a juvenile detention home. On July 2, 1988, at age 19, Lee marries Jacqueline Sims in Solitude, Louisiana and he found it difficult to keep a job. Lee reportedly beat his wife Jacqueline regularly. So often in fact the police were called on a few occasions. However, for reasons known only to Lee and Jacqueline, she purchased Lee a .25 caliber handgun on September 1, 1996. June 1, 1997, Eugene Bisfontaine was murdered in Baton Rouge. It is suspected that Lee was a killer. There is no concrete evidence of this to date. However, the Discovery Channel has done an episode of Killing Fails, A Body in the Bayou. By March 13, 1998, Lee was sentenced to therapy by a judge for a misdemeanor trespassing charge. He never went. September 1995 through January 2000. He was arrested at various times in Lake Charles, Zachary, and other Louisiana towns on battery, suspicion of being a peeping Tom, and stalking. Randy Mebrewer, a nurse manager at a home health company, was a 28-year-old mother of a young son when she was abducted from her home in the Oak Shadows subdivision in Zachary. A neighbor called police after finding Mebro's three-year-old son wandering in the street. Police found signs of a bloody struggle inside the home, but never located her body. Pictured here is the trash bag which contained the DNA evidence linking him to her murder. In April 2000, Lee is convicted of flight from an officer in one incident, and sentenced to prison for two years. A judge also revoked his probation on an earlier stalking charge. Then in January 2001, Dara Toddley is released from prison. On September 24, 2001, Gina Wilson Green is found strangled in her home in Baton Rouge. The only DNA linking him is found on a trash bag. On May 31, 2002, Charlotte Marie Pace was found stabbed to death in her home just south of LSU. July 9, 2002. A woman is attacked and beaten in her home in Bro Ridge, Louisiana, but survives. On July 12, 2002, 
Pankin Amour was abducted from her home in Baton Rouge. Her body was found four days late near Whiskey Bay. On November 21, 2002, Trinashe Dean Collum attacked near Grand Coteau, north of Lafayette. Her body was found three days later in Scott, Louisiana. On May 3, 2003, Carrie Lynn Yoder was abducted from her home. Her body was found ten days late near Whiskey Bay. On May 5, 2003, Lee was forced to submit to a DNA sample for testing in a case not linked to the serial killer. The tests on the DNA sample later linked him to the five killings already blamed on the serial killer. On May 26, 2003, Lee publicly identified as a serial killer suspect. Arrest warrant was issued in the Yodu case. In all, from 1998 through 2003, Lee is suspected of killing seven women. Here they are. Charlotte Marie Pace Ben Guinamore, Gina Wilson Green, Jerry Linda Zota, Carrie Lynn Yoda, Trina Shadeen Collum and Randy Mebrua. Possibly more. On May 27, 2003, Lee is captured in Atlanta, Georgia on an arrest warrant issued for him in a non-fatal attack that happened July 9, 2002. On May 28, 2003, Lee agrees not to flight transfer back to Louisiana. In August 2004, Lee is convicted of second-degree murder, and sentenced to life in the murder of Gerald Linda Zoto. Lee was sentenced to life in prison. In October 2004, Lee is sentenced to death for the murder of Charlotte Marie Pace. On January 16, 2016, Dara Toddley is rushed to the hospital from Angola for trouble with his base maker. January the 21st, 2016. Dara Toddley is pronounced dead just before 9 a.m. This was the moment when a team of detectives realized they had matched DNA to South Louisiana serial killer Derek Todd Lee. That was 13 years ago. The killer Derek Todd Lee died this morning at a hospital. We want to caution you. What you're about to see may be disturbing for some viewers. Derek Todd Lee's vicious attack spanned five years. His DNA was linked to the disappearance and deaths of at least eight women in South Louisiana. But the ninth victim, an Acadiana woman, lived to tell her story. On July 9, 2002, Lee knocked on the door of Diane Alexander's rural St. Martin Parish home asking for direction. He would then brutally attack her. These pictures were taken at the hospital and offer a glimpse of the horror Lee inflicted on his victim. Alexander spoke exclusively to KLFY in 2014. I can't say how many times he hit me up. You know, all I remember was one force hit to the forehead and that was it for me. Miraculously, Alexander survived because her son returned home from school. Alexander said Lee ran out the back door when he heard Alexander's son pull up outside. I had my air conditioning unit on, and he turned it off to alert himself if anyone would show up. In April of 2014, Alexander released a book called Divine Justice, where she details her face-to-face -face encounter with a Baton Rouge serial killer. In the studio, Lydia Magallanes for KLFY News 10. Dara Toddley changed South Baton Rouge forever. He was the boogeyman to most women in the South Baton Rouge and surrounding areas even after his capture. His crimes were brutal. He would slash these women's throats so severely. In some cases, he cut his victims' throats all the way to the neck bone. He was a rapist and murder of epic proportion for many people in the area. In one case, he broke the door down while his victim was in the shower. He did all this without remorse. He was a cold, callous man who had lack of empathy for the woman he attacked and murdered, not to mention for the community at large. Upon hearing the news of his death, many of the victims' families were relieved to hear of his death. I for one, am glad to hear he can no longer cause the harm he once did. Once again, thanks for watching this installment of Morbid Storytime. Please click the like button, if you want to see more, give me a thumbs up too, while you are at it. Leave a comment below, and tell me what you think.